Okay, so now let's do an example. Work example 6.1. A reversible heat engine operates between two heat reservoirs, one at T1 equals 1000 degrees Kelvin, and the other at T2 equals 300 Kelvin. Uh, if 100 joules of heat is transferred to uh, the heat engine from the reservoir at T1, how much work is done by the engine? Okay, what do I do? Ada was one minus TC divided by TH. And Ada was also equal to W over DQ. So W over Q. 1 minus TC over TH. Work divided by 100. 1 minus 300 divided by 1,000 Kelvin. 1,000 Kelvin is what? About 800, 700 something degrees Celsius? What's the work we get out? Did you know that 300 is TC? Seventy. You had to heat it to like seven hundred Celsius, and you're still losing out. Here's how the laws of thermodynamics work. Keep this in mind. Okay, so going back. So since now we are depressed that we put in a, th a hundred joules of work and we only got 70 out. Here's how laws of thermodynamics mess us up. Okay, ready for it? Zero's law says you cannot ignore the temperature of your engine. First law says you can never win. That is, never have more useful work than input. We just saw that, right? Second law says you can never even break even. Remember when I said those, the, the, remember when I said this was only true for ideal reversible processes? You can actually never ignore entropy loss in your real cycles. So you can't even break even. You always lose until you reach absolute zero. And the third law says, you never ever reach absolute temperature. So it's like literally sad face upon sad face upon sad face upon sad face. So every law that you get that you develop basically messes you up even more than the last one did. At least we can never call that. So sad news, we can't even break even, we can't win. <gasps> okay, keep that in mind when you're making your engines. Not to mention my engine put in the So on that happy note, let's talk about what actually happens.
Somebody read. Come on. Heat is transferred to a heat engine from a furnace at a rate of 80 kilowatts per hour. If the rate of waste heat of waste heat eject rejection to a nearby river is 50 kilowatt hours, determine the net power output and the thermal efficiency from for this heat engine. Assume heat loop heat loses losses through the pipe and other components are negligible. Again, as ideal as we can get it. Is that true? Can we ever ignore heat losses? No. Nope. Okay, how do we do this? Look at the units. It's a rate, correct? So Q is 80 kilowatt hour. Oh, QH is 80, right? And heat rejection will be QC. And that is 50 kilowatt hour. And it's asking us for thermal efficiency and the net power output. How do I find the net power output? Well, plus or minus? Oh, I'm sorry. What's the answer? 30. 30 what? 30. Kilowatt hour. And what is its efficiency? Useful work divided by input. So what's the useful work? And what was the input? What's the efficiency? Wow. <clears throat> and this is when we're ignoring all other losses. 